Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining the yoga class today. And um, again, I'm welcome you, welcoming you into my home, into my space in the beach. And um, I'm really happy to have this as our second session. And uh, just a quick check in with everyone. I hope everyone's feeling okay and they're, um, I guess, coping or, or finding their new sense of balance, their new sense of self in this time. I know it's a bit confusing, but it's really nice collectively, energetically to have a practice. Um, and even if you're on your own or if you're with your partner watching this, it's any way that you've chosen to participate. Uh, holds a lot of value. So thank you again so much. Um, I wanted to start off our practice with just acknowledging the spring equinox that happened last week and just a opportunity of, of, of growth, of change, um, shifting out of the winter weather, uh, hopefully, we're still in Canada, and uh, just sort of acknowledging the opportunity of growth that we often see with uh, our seedlings and our plants in the next few months. Um, one thing I wanted to share, and this is an intention I had in my morning meditation before we actually get started in our practice, is that something came up to me so vividly in my practice this morning, and it all sort of came down to the simplicity of gratitude. And it's something I talk about, it's something I read about all the time, but it doesn't necessarily show up in practice all the time for me um, because I'm just so busy and I'm pregnant and you know I have a three-year-old and just life is a little bit busier but I felt in particular this sort of heat and warmth through my body um, because I've noticed that I've had these micro moments in particular uh, a little bit of last week and early on into this week of these moments of just feeling happiness the, the really really small sparks of it whether it's kind of with my daughter or on my own, or I actually got to read one page of a, a novel that I've been trying to read. Um, but just little moments where I just feel like my heart feels a bit warmer. And I realized something sort of ended up in my meditation where I realized these small specks of gratitude turn into this opportunity of resilience. And I'm not sure if this is something you've felt on your own um, whether you're on treatment, you've completed treatment, or just during this experience right now, if during those heavier moments, do you ever come across those small specks of like, oh, this is interesting, oh, this is great. Um, my daughter and I actually planted a few seeds a few days ago, and we've just started seeing some growth. And that has just kind of transformed our day because she looks at it at least like 25 times an hour just to check on it. So it's been nice to sort of uh, view that and acknowledge that. So if you're interested in opening and peaking that door of resilience, I, I almost find that those small specks of gratitude can help you embrace this time. So keeping that in mind, as we practice today on our mat, I'm hoping that as you are transitioning into different postures, into your different asanas, um, you're connecting to your breath, will you come across that experience of gratitude? Um, whether it's breathing deeply or if you've been sort of working through a pose that kind of felt right today, can you feel that for a couple seconds or even acknowledge it? So we're gonna start our practice with a little bit of breathing before I walk back to the mat. Take a couple seconds and just close your eyes if you feel comfortable or soften your gaze. And you can have, you can be cross-legged in your chair, or on your couch, whatever feels right for you today. And take a second to relax your shoulders away from your ears. And, and you can rest your hands so that the palms are facing down or palms are facing up. It really depends on what feels right for you today. And just take a couple seconds as you're seated, keeping your spine lengthened. Maybe your jaw is starting to relax. Maybe your eyes are starting to soften around the muscles. And bring some awareness into how you're breathing. Are you taking long breaths or quick short ones?
are you breathing through your nostrils the whole time or are you alternating between your nose and your mouth? And just knowing that where you are in this exact second, this minute, this moment is perfect. Ever so gently, take that right hand of yours and rest it near your abdomen. So either above your belly button or just on it. And we're going to start our practice with some ujjayi breath. Ujjayi meaning diaphragmatic, deep breathing. Knowing that when we breathe in through our nostrils, our belly will fill up with air like a big balloon. And then when we breathe out, your belly will make its way back in towards the spine. Now, in traditional ujjayi breath, you can have a little bit of resistance through your throat. But if you're feeling like you don't want to touch that region too hard, you're just breathing in through your nostril, out through your nostril. We're going to try five together. Breathing in. Inhale. Inhale again. Exhale. Again, inhale. And exhale. Come back into your normal breath. And feel free to allow your hand to stay rested near your abdomen, your belly. If your hand is slightly above your belly button, you may be feeling a bit more possible connection to your solar plexus. Perfect. And then very gently, take that right hand and face it forward. And we're going to use our thumb and first finger to do anulom belom, which is the alternate nasal breathing. So you're going to take that thumb, close the right nostril, and I'm going to help you through the pattern of the breath, alternating each side, but take your time. Nothing in yoga is meant to look perfect or be perfect, so you'll just do your best to catch into the pattern. So with our left nostril, we're going to take a deep breath in. Take that thing, first finger, switch up the nostril, exhale out of the right. Same side, breathe in. Switch to the other nostril, exhale out. Same side, breathe in. Switch out. Same side, inhale. Switch, exhale. One more time, inhale. Exhale out. Take another inhale, release that right hand down, palm up or palm down. Coming back into your breath. Perfect. We're going to try one more breath before we transition to our mat. The next one, I'm coming in a little bit closer just to show you. Uh, this inhale, exhale breath is an energizing breath. It's meant to really open up our heart chakra, our solar plexus, as well as our throat chakra. Um, so with this practice in particular, when you breathe in, you're going to breathe in curling your tongue like such. 
And you're gonna inhale like a tunnel of air moving through, and you're gonna exhale as you exhale through your nostrils. So it almost feels like you're swallowing the air in. And we're just gonna do that three times. Breathe in. Exhale. Two more times, inhale. Exhale. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Perfect. Take a couple seconds here. Perfect. So I'm gonna make my way back to the mat. And we're gonna start off seated. So again, if you have the opportunity to uh, sit on the floor um, on, I have a little uh, cushion myself, but if you have a, uh, a bolster or a blanket or anything that gives you a bit of height in your pelvis, that can be really helpful. Um, you're also welcome to, of course, um, sit in a chair at any point and make those modifications along the way. So we're gonna take a second Having our palms facing each other right now, facing towards the, uh, the laptop camera. And you're going to take a deep inhale, bring your hands overhead. Exhale down into your heart so your hands are in prayer. Good. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale out. One more time. Inhale. Exhale into your heart. Perfect. So we'll transition to some opening of the muscles that hold your rib cage in place on either side. So many ways to do that. We're going to try the first part. So this time when you breathe in, arms will come overhead. You're going to keep your right hand open. Your left hand is going to hold on to that right wrist. Take a deep breath to stretch that hand above as high as you want to take it again we don't work within pain which is always our goal with yoga so try not to move into pain and you're going to start to move towards the left side of the room so really we're stretching the right side of our body the organs the muscles the skin taking a few breaths here and when we talk about breaths we breathe down into our diaphragm when we breathe Let's do one more breath here. Exhale. Good. Come back to center. Release your hands. Good. We're going to try the other side. Inhale. Bring your arms overhead. Right hand grabs the left wrist. Take a second here. Stretch up. Breathe in. Exhale. Other side. So now I'm stretching the left side of my body. Breathing down into my belly. Softening my gaze. Maybe one more breath here. Good. Come back to center. Release the hands. Good. Now we're going to try to see if we can deepen that stretch on our side body. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your left hand, rest it either on the chair, if you're on a chair on the under part of your chair, or if you're on your yoga mat, you're resting your hand down. You're going to take an inhale with your right hand, and we're just doing a modified crescent pose. So you're reaching your hand to the opposite side of the room, and you're welcome to look up towards the hand if that feels it's serving you, if it's supporting you. But if you'd like to look down or straight ahead, if you have any uh, neck tension, that's okay too. And you're always welcome to release the hand and rest your hand behind your neck if you're finding that if there's any tension around your shoulder, try not to build tension but release tension. One more breath here. Good, come back to center. Perfect, give yourself a little shake. Find your neutral space, your sense of center. Right hand now. Rests into the ground, into the earth, or under your chair if you'd like. Inhale, raise that hand up. This time you're bringing it to the other side. 
modified crescent, either looking up towards your hand or looking straight. And again, if there's any tightness or impairment or pain in that shoulder, you can also release it so that it's more like your elbow is raised. Make sure to honor those discomforts and sounds as information of what you need, not what you should be doing. One more breath here. And back to center. Perfect. Give your arms, shoulders a bit of shake. Perfect. Good. Okay, so we are going to now move into a gentle twist. Um, and again, if you're sitting in a chair, very, very simple to modify. If you are on the ground, I'm going to give you two options for your legs. Um, one is you can actually be cross-legged, just as I am, something to that degree. Um, the other option is if, if you are a little bit more advanced and you've got sort of the opening and the relaxed pelvis and hips, you would keep your right knee down with your left leg on top. That's, that's one modification if, if you feel that that's supporting you. If not, just a regular cross leg is fine. Um, I'm gonna just show the cross over the leg for now. Um, so I'm gonna take my, my right hand and then I'm gonna just show you my left here. My left is behind my back right now. So if you're on the ground, it's, behind, it's on your yoga mat, on your cushion, on your pillow. And my right hand is going to scoop up and rest near my elbow. In my case, I have a giant belly. So I'm going to rest my hand on the front of the knee. And I'm going to look over my left shoulder. And you're just going to take a few breaths here. And often the opportunity to do very gentle twists helps us to feel a little bit of opening and opportunity to improve our posture. It helps to massage our organs. But just being mindful that uh, if you do have any METs, any sites of tumor in the spine, try not to lean in too intensely. Just work in the range that serves you. One more deep breath. Let it all out. <sighs> Good, come back to center. Perfect. We're going to try the other side. So if you are switching your feet, you're welcome to do that. If you are cross-legged, you can adjust your legs in the opposite direction or just keep them as, uh, as they are. Um, so this time what I'm doing is I'm taking the right hand, I'm resting it behind me, taking my left hand, resting it in the opposite part of my leg. So my left hand is rested near my right thigh, right knee. Um, again, if you have... If you're not pregnant, um, you can probably rest your elbow on the knee. Um, I'm going to have my hand just crossed over. We're going to take a deep inhale, stretch your spine. Exhale, rotate your spine and your view, your eyes, towards the right side of the room, just over your right shoulder. One more deep breath, inhale, exhale out. Good, come back to center. Give yourself a second to recenter your spine and come back into a comfortable position in the center. We're gonna move through one last seated position before we transition to uh, another pose. We are going to do uh, Guru Dasana, uh, but a modified version. So this is the snake pose, if you've seen it before. Um, so typically it's done standing, your legs are twisted on each other, your arms are twisted on each other. We're going to try this modified seating. I love it because if you have really tight um, upper back muscles, you actually might notice a beautiful opening in this. So what I'd like you to do is take that right hand and create like an L shape, a right angle. And you're going to take your left and scoop it on your knee and see if you can grab hand to hand if possible. If you can't, maybe you're crossed hand, your hands are crossed over your chest or your shoulders, um, but just doing your best to find that sense of center with your hands uh, or your upper body. And then you're gonna see if you can lift your elbows up so that they're somewhat parallel to your elbows. Uh, your elbows are parallel to your shoulders. And then see if you feel an opening between your shoulder blades. 
Um, I feel it more so on my right side because that's the right side that I'm really stretching on. So just taking a few breaths here. And gently release. Good. Shake your arms out. And we're going to try the other side. This time, left hand comes up, creating a right angle. You're going to take your right hand underneath the elbow and see if you can get them nice and close together, your hands if possible, or crossed over your arms or shoulders. And then gently lift the elbow so that they're about the same height as your shoulders and come into your breath. Good, beautiful, release, slow, rolling your shoulders back. Excellent. Now, we're gonna transition into cat and cow um, onto your yoga mat, or if you're seated in a chair, same thing is very much adjustable or modifiable. So just make your way over to your mat, so clear it so that there's no cushions or anything nearby. Um, if you are choosing to do it seated right now, um, what you're going to do is you're going to actually sit in your chair or on your couch, and the movement is going to be rolling your spine inwards to create a C and the opposite direction. So I'm going to show how to do it on a yoga mat. So your wrists and, and shoulder are in line, your uh, knees and hips are in line, and what I'm doing is I'm spacing my knees and toes hip distance apart, so I feel extra safe in this position. So very gently, you're going to take an inhale, tucking the tailbone in, looking down towards your knees, and slowly exhale, release that pelvis, look either straight in front of you or up towards the ceiling. Inhale in. Exhale. Release your pelvis. Look up. Two more at your own pace. Perfect. And when you're ready, come back into neutral spine, where your spine is relatively straight with a little curve on the lower back. And ever so gently, we're going to make our way into standing, but we're going to do it as slow as possible. So if you're, in, if you're in your chair, take your time to stand up. If you're on the ground, walk your hands closer towards your knees and try to get your weight into your feet, flattening your heels into the ground. Now my tailbone is starting to lean towards the back room. And very slowly, I'm going to roll up vertebrae by vertebrae all the way until the last thing that comes up is my head. Good. So I'm just going to adjust myself. And in this position, we're going to move into Mountain pose. Palms facing forward. Shoulders down and away from your ears. There's a little bit of softness in your knees, so you're not pulling your knees back behind you. You're keeping there a little bit of softness. And just take a quick second and notice where your feet are. Um, you can definitely have your feet very close together, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, heel to heel. I find just the positioning of my pelvis, I find it a little bit more relaxing to have my feet apart. So find the position that feels right for you. Take a second, lift your toes up off the ground, and bring your toes back into the earth. Good. Here in mountain pose, see if you can find something in front of you. And we're going to practice a little bit of Drishti, which is a sort of meditation where you soften your gaze, 
And take a second to acknowledge how your body feels. Acknowledge where you are in your space. Give yourself two slow, deep breaths here. Very nice. And in this pose, we are going to move into uh, what in an exercise class, we'd call it um, a chair squat. Um, we also call it Utkatasana, which is a very gentle bend in the knees as your sit, hips sit back. It's a great energizing pose. I'm going to actually um, demonstrate it from the side so you can kind of see where I'm practicing from. Um, you are always welcome to hold on to a wall or chair or be close to your chair behind you. So how we're going to practice is ever so gently, you're going to take a deep inhale, bring your arms forward or above you, reach your tailbone back, and your chin is going to be tucked down. So you're sort of still looking at the floor. And you just want to make sure that your knees are not going in front of your toes. And you're just going to take one or two breaths here. Take a deep inhale now. Exhale, push your hands down towards your hips, hips forward, standing straight. Excellent, let's try that one again. Inhale, reach your hips back, bring your arms forward, either as high up as you wanna take it or down. Knees behind your toes, breathing here. Excellent. Take a deep breath now. Exhale. Push your hands behind your back, hips forward, standing straight. Excellent. Now, just in this position, see if you can do just a few heel, heel raises. So heels off the ground two or three times. You can rock back and forth, heels up, toes up. Heels up, toes up. Perfect. Um, now I'd like you to come to the front of your mat. So I was at my halfway mark of the, of the uh, mat. I'm going to come more to the front, and we're going to practice our three Virabhadrasanas, which is our three warrior poses today, just as a way to strengthen through our body, build some flexibility in and around our pelvic floor. Um, but it also is a beautiful practice for balance too. So let's give that a go. So your feet are hip distance apart. Spine is straight, shoulders roll back. If you have a wall or chair next to you, that's great if you need it for extra support. You're gonna keep your right foot in front of you. Take that left leg and bring it as comfortably far back as you wanna take it. And that back foot is actually gonna be rotated out about 45 degrees. So that's really how you're grounding your energy. And my weight is seated between the front of my foot and the and the back of my foot. So I'm not resting my weight into my front body. It's actually right through the center. Now, as your hips are forward towards your right knee, just double check, look down, make sure that your knee is not crossing your toe. Good. If you feel safe with that, rest your hands either near your heart, in prayer, or if you want full extension, arms overhead, you can. We're going to rest here for three diaphragmatic breaths, ujjayi breaths. Perfect. Now take that back leg, the left leg, and rotate it out. So now it's pointing forward. So they're in opposite directions now. And we're gonna to move to warrior two. So in warrior two, your front knee, your right knee is still softly bent. Left leg is relatively straight with a little micro bend in the knee. 
and then extend your hands out towards the side, either palm up or palm down, whichever suits you best. Don't feel like it has to be a rigid pose where you're straightening your elbows. Soften the elbows, soften your shoulders, and then you're gonna try to initially look at your hand and your middle right finger, and then see if you can look slightly beyond that, softening your gaze, coming back into the state of drishti, which is inner awareness. Let's take three breaths here. And gently release your hands down. And heel toe, heel toe, your feet back to center. Perfect. Now, if you've had the opportunity to do Virabhadrasana 3, you're welcome to join me. You're welcome to watch. Um, this one is a balanced pose. So we're back to the front of our mat. We're going to focus again on our right leg. So right leg is forward. And you are going to take a big, giant step back with your left leg. And if you have a wall or chair next to you or any sort of assistance, you can definitely use it. What we're trying to do is get the weight of our body into our right leg. So eventually the back foot is off the ground, flexing the toe down. And then you would have your arms behind your back so that your palms are facing down. And you can take two to three breaths here. And again, you can adjust the angle. If you don't want to be so parallel to the ground, you can be slightly lifted. Two more breaths. And then take a second. Get your weight into your back leg. Standing tall. And then walk so to join the left leg into the right leg. Shake your legs out. Good. Let's move if you want to the other side of your mat or you can stay on the original side. We're gonna change the position, same three Virabhadrasana, same three warrior, energizing, deep connection to our divine spirit on our left leg. So Virabhadrasana one, warrior one, you're gonna start with your feet hip distance apart, toes straight, shoulders down and back. We're already in mountain pose, which is beautiful. That's our grounding pose. Take a second, take that right foot and bring it as far back as you feel you can today based on your balance, how you're feeling. Take your back toe and make sure that it's about 45 degree angle. Keep that right knee bent, left knee bent. So if you're looking down, I can still see my toes, which is a good sign that my body is safe. My hips are forward. Palm to palm and prayer if you'd like or a full extension of your arms. Let's check our three ujjayi breaths. Perfect. Moving into warrior two, Take that back leg, that right foot, and you're going to point it forward this time. So it's in the opposite direction of your left, so perpendicular. And you're going to spread your arms out towards the side body. Palms up or palms down. I like palms up. I keep a little softness in my elbows. I'm going to look beyond my left hand, my left middle finger. And as I soften my gray gaze, I practice my three ujjayi breaths to reflect in my pose. Release your hands down and heel toe, heel toe, back to center. Good. And then if you'd like to join me for a Virabhadrasana three, your feet again are hip distance apart. 
Your left foot will stay where it is, but your right foot is gonna come back nice and long. And what we're trying to do here again is we're trying to get all our weight into our left leg. So very gently, if you have the wall chair, anything to assist you, get your weight so that it's evenly distributed between your toe and your heel. And see if you feel comfortable lifting that back leg back. You're, that means you're gonna have to slightly lean forward Palms facing down, out to the side. Three breaths if you feel you can manage. When you're ready to come out, place the weight into your back leg. And release. Good, coming back to center, heel toe, heel toe. Good, take a second to shake your legs out, shake your arms out. And if you've got water near you, if you've got a tea, let's have a quick sip. Let's check in with ourselves. I have chosen rosemary and honey today. It's a great for upper respiratory, uh, throat chakra, heart chakra, and it tastes divine. Perfect. Excellent. So we are going to make our way down and work a little bit on opening up our hips and pelvis. So one of my favorite versions of getting down to the ground. Um, and again, if you're in a chair, we'll just modify that for you. Um, so if you want to return your cushion or your towel or pillow, anything you want back to your mat, it's a really great way to keep your pelvis open and extended when you're seated. So um, if you are sitting in a chair, you're just going to go relatively wide and you're just going to sort of sit into your chair with your knees out and wide. If you'd like to join me down to the ground, what we're going to do, and it's traditionally in English, it's called the runner's pose. You may have seen this one. Um, you're going to lower your hips and I'll show you this from the side so you can practice along with me just to get the angle. You're going to have your, uh, again, toes pointing out, feet are wider than hip distance. And you're gonna sit your hips back so much so that your elbows are gonna rest on the inside of your knees. So for some of us, we might be really high up here. So you might be holding the ground if you've got really tight calf muscles. Um, or if you'd like, you could be seated or, or propped up. And if this doesn't serve you today, feel free to just come into seated Come back into your chair in the most relaxed way you can. And just see if you can stretch those inner thigh muscles out. Build some awareness to your root chakra, the lowest base energy channel, which is very much close to your pelvic floor muscles. A lot of our capacity to stay grounded and not necessarily always feel pulled emotionally from one direction to the other comes from our connection to our, our root chakra. So I, I do personally find this pose in particular to be super supportive for me. Let's take one more deep breath together. Ah. <sighs> Perfect. Now we're going to move into butterfly pose, which is toes together, uh, heels together, and knees out to the side. And just uh, recognize that your knees might be quite high up, depending on um, just the muscles uh, around your pelvis being possibly a little bit on the tight side or if you've had surgery, anything relating to that, you might notice some tightness. So no judgment about what the angle should look like. It's where you feel in your body um, you feel comfortable with. Um, so if you already feel a beautiful stretch in your inner thigh muscle through your root chakra, through your pelvic floor, you're welcome to rest just as you are. You can do palms up, shoulders down and back, if you would like to, or if you're open to trying to deepen this pose, you're gonna take your hands closer down to your mat and walk forward with those hands. Trying to acknowledge that this bend forward comes from our hips, 
not our spine. So we're not rounding our spine. Our spine is still straight. Just in here, we're going to take five slow breaths, just at your own pace. Perfect. And make your way back up if you've chosen to lean forward or just take a second and just center yourself. Bring your knees, if you can, closer together. For me, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's only, it'll only go that far. And just shake your knees side to side. So if you're in a chair, you're just swaying your knees side to side. Excellent. And for many of us that might be sitting a little bit more than usual this week or last week, I, I would like to particularly have a little bit of an opportunity to stretch out your hamstrings, the back part of your legs in the dandasana. So for that, if you're okay either seated or if you're sitting in a chair, you would just have one leg straightened out in front of you. Or if you're seated, you can have both legs. And what you're trying to do here is bend from the hips to lean forward trying to get a hold of your toes. Now, if you're feeling that you're not getting much range of motion, in my case, I have to modify by having my feet a little bit wider apart with a softened knee, and that's the only way I can really get that range. So be playful with it. No judgment. I'm just over seven months pregnant, so I am doing my very best to maintain some form of practice. And for me, it means just being really creative. And if you have a strap, you're welcome to strap uh, around the base of your feet. If you want to just grab a hold of your pant legs or your leggings, you can too. So again, just be playful, no judgment. Uh, we're not physically in a space together, so no one's going to look at you or make any sort of judgment. Just acknowledge what feels right for you. And if there's any natural spark of gratitude in, in this pose that can show up too. Two breaths here. And gently bring your spine back into place if you had to lean forward. Good, rolling your shoulders down and back. Excellent. So now we're going to make our way down to the ground. If you need an another water break, you're welcome to. If you feel like you're, you're well hydrated, um, take your time to take the cushion off or the pillow, anything you had near you. And uh, you're going to make your way down. And this is sort of an important strategy, whether in yoga or in your day-to-day -day life, if you are um, getting in and out of bed, is make sure that you are lowering down from the side of your body so you're not giving yourself whiplash. And then you're going to roll onto your back. Good. Just double check the time, make sure we're good. Yeah, excellent. So what we're going to do here is we are going to move into a bridge pose. So in the bridge pose, there's many ways to modify this. Um, you can have your hands rested on the sides of your body. You can have your elbows bent so your fingertips are up. Um, and then, of course, you can go as high or low as possible. The main being that you want to feel the effort coming from your bum and your hamstrings, the back legs. So what I would even suggest is have your toes pointing up a little bit so you know not to put too much weight into your toes, that it's the heels that are helping you lift up. So, And if you need any support from your hands, you can. So taking a deep inhale right now. Exhale, lift your hips right off the ground. And if you'd like, you can connect your fingers underneath your pelvis, stretch your shoulders down and back. Breathing diaphragmatically from your belly. And see if you can maintain that for two more breaths.
Good. Release your hands and gently lower your pelvis down. I'm going to ask us to try that one more time. First, take a deep inhale. Exhale, lift your hips off the ground. And come into your ujjayi breath. You can connect your hands under your hips if you'd like to open up your chest. Two more breaths here. One more. Releasing your hips down, good. And just take a second and just bring your knees side to side. Good, just releasing any tension in the back, releasing your hands and your fingertips, any tension that may have built up from there. And if you are down on the ground, you can attempt a, I'm just gonna adjust my mic, um, a uh, spinal twist. So this time you're gonna have your toes and heels together, knees touching, and you can spread your arms out, out to the side, and then gently roll your knees towards the right side of your body. So feeling a gentle stretch on the left side. Maybe taking five or six breaths here. Again, not ever moving into pain or discomfort. On your next inhale, bring your knees back to the center. Good, take a second if you need to just shake your knees side to side, just to adjust your spine. And then same idea, we're gonna this time turn our knees and our feet. We'll be slightly off our yoga mat, but knees are gonna be towards the left side of our body. Five to six breaths here. Good. Stay there for another three breaths at your own pace. And ever so gently, bring your knees back to center. And this is a perfect position to actually transition into your final pose, which is the corpse pose, uh, Shavasana. So take a second to adjust your body in this pose. So whether that means if you need to tuck a, a pillow or towel or a blanket under your knees, you're okay with your legs being straight. Allow your head and your neck and your jaw just to feel really relaxed in that lying position. And if you are choosing to lie down, see if you can bring your arms away from your body so that they might be slightly off the mat. Just kind of, it allows your heart and the muscles of your chest to sort of relax and stay calm and steady. If you're in a chair, you may just be seated as far back into the chair or the couch with your feet still grounded in the earth. Just allowing yourself to Notice the change of your breath, the change of your body and your spirit. Begin to notice the bottoms of your feet and your toes. Notice any sensations any tightness or that sense of holding. See if you can let that sensation go. Really surrender your muscles, your bones, your tendons, your ligaments. Let yourself sink into your mat, sink into your chair. And then become aware of your ankles and build that awareness up towards your knees. And the same thing, allow your body to sink deeper into your mat. If 
from your knees. Gaze inward to any of the energy or the holding from your knees up towards your pelvis, your lower back. See if you can sink deeply into that. The feeling of release and calm. Moving up your lower back, your mid back, your upper back. Again, sink into that feeling of safety and support in the ground, feeling held by Mother Nature. Feel the calm and softness of your arms and your hands. Allow the muscles around your neck and your jaw and your cheekbones to soften. Moving up towards your third eye. So the muscle that holds between your eyes. See if you can release that. And we'll take this opportunity to lie or sit in our meditation. Surrendering ourselves to the state of peace and calm. Noticing that if there are any thoughts or images showing up in your mind, be aware of it, but be detached. Try not to allow an emotion to get tangled in that thought. And when you see it for what it is, which is just a thought, come back into your breath. Begin to deepen your breath. Noticing that with every inhale, your belly rises up. And with every exhale, your belly floats down towards the earth. Build your awareness back into your body and start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, awakening your mind 
your body, your spirit. And then taking your time, only when you feel ready, roll towards the right side of your body. And just take a few breaths there. And then when you feel ready, use your hands and lift your body back up into seated. So take a few seconds to find the most comfortable position you can in a seated position. And very gently bring your hands into your heart. And notice any sensation or feeling around gratitude. What are you grateful for? What tiny sparks or big sparks are settling into your heart. And then feel free to keep your hands rested near your heart or into prayer. As we end our practice by saying Namaste which in Sanskrit and Hindi means that you are bowing your divine energy first towards yourself and then those towards others, your community, your family, your friends. Namaste. Thank you so much everyone for joining the session today. Uh, I hope some of those poses served you, honored you, and I hope a few of them you'll carry on to tonight or tomorrow. We have another class happening on Friday, so I'm looking forward to seeing you energetically. <laughs> and until then, be well. And if there's any information, any offerings you have, please feel free to uh, text us along the way right now, message us on there. But Thank you again so much for joining and sending you peace and love and good health.